answer module here in Zoom. And uh, I wanted to invite you to put your questions there and our panel will address them at the end of the presentation. Uh, we will not be using the chat feature that's uh, uh, been disabled. Um, we will give everyone as, um, sorry, <laughs> we'll answer as many questions as possible, but we do respect your time. So we'll try not to go over the one hour. Sailing with Windstar Cruises from Venice to Malta was probably one of my most memorable uh, travel experiences that I've ever had. And I just have to explain, I was on one of the private, uh, uh, the yachts, which you'll see the sails in the picture. And we started down the Grand Canal in Venice. And you start up on the top deck with your glass of champagne, the music gets louder as the sails rise. And standing at the um, railing, all you could see was cameras, flashes going off and people running to look at this magnificent ship. And I truly felt like I was on my own private yacht and it was the most special experience that I've ever had. And those kinds of experiences continued for the rest of our journey. So um, I think that you'll find today very fascinating and Windstar is truly um, a ship that you must experience. Windstar Cruises is here to take us on an extraordinary voyage to learn about their sailing and their all sweet yachts. And we're gonna be giving you a special insider look into a recent sailing in a destination that I'm sure is on everyone's bucket list. We'll be wrapping up our presentation with a special offer for your next Windstar booking. So I am pleased to have Roger Arden, the Western Regional Sales Manager for Windstar Cruises join us today. And Roger, uh, we're looking forward to what you have to tell us about Windstar Cruises. Well, Marlene, thanks so much for having me today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with uh, Direct and Vision Travel. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a, a fun event. We're going to get through this, uh, this series of slides, and I've, I've got a special guest as well that's going to be joining me uh, for this presentation. And uh, he's actually just come back from uh, a Tahiti cruise on board the, 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 the Star Breeze, which I'm ex excited to hear about his experience too. We did talk a little bit about it, but um, he's fresh off, fresh off the, uh, the cruise. So, uh, you know, as you can see, and then Marlene, thank you so much for, for talking about uh, your experience. Um, what Windstar is most known for is, is these iconic sailing vessels. And you see on the left of your screen is in fact, uh, the Windsurf, which is our, our flagship. Um, she's uh, only 342 guests at full capacity. Um, and then we also, as, as Marlene mentioned too, we do have our, our yachts as well, our star class plus yachts that we're quite proud of. So we operate a fleet of six different vessels throughout the world. Um, so we, we'd go to most destinations that you would think of, of cruising. And um, we do it in a way that is certainly a small ship experience, um, very small. Renee had talked and I talked about before is that some cruise lines talk about being small, being you know, seven to 900 passengers. Um, we're, we are 100 to 300 and change our passengers. So it certainly is a, a def, a definitely a different way to cruise. Um, and uh, we're going to take you through this, this amazing, uh, the, the amazing destinations that we, we go to, as well as some information about the ships themselves. Um, I love this photo too. This, no, it, it, you really don't have to be able to, to climb to the top of the mountain to enjoy a Windstar cruise but it just shows you just how, how deep into the, the destination that we are able to get to. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my partner here, uh, Renee Schneeberger, who is also gonna be on the presentation with me. And he's gonna be talking about his experience in Tahiti. Um, and then let's, let's, let's go back to the ships though. This is where, we're really, which really sets us apart. So certainly there are, there are other cruise lines out there that do go all over the world too, but they are not able to get into the same destinations that we are. Um, we do have a round trip cruise that, sorry, a year round cruise that we do operate in Tahiti on our sailing vessel. Um, earlier this, this year, in fact, a few months, a few weeks ago, Renee was actually on one of our, our yachts there on the left side, but it certainly is private yacht style cruising um, in, a, in a luxury uh, environment that, that is, is nothing like any other cruise line out there. Um, I really love this photo. It, it really does show the word perspective and shows you, you know, just when you think about cruising in, in, in general, they are big ship cruising. And it, it's a lot of people don't know about these small ships like the Windstar operates. And this is not our, um, this is, this is in fact our largest ship here, the, the Windsurf, but 
It's certainly not the largest big ocean ship that, that is out there operating. So um, it hey, really Roger, does show I, perspective. I, yep. It, it's a pleasure to join you. Uh, hey, thank you for this you. picture. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect segue to help guests understand that there are nuances and that there are different products. We certainly have a lot of loyal clients who like the big ships. They provide stability and rougher seas. They have an amazing array of amenities uh, on board. But when you want to go to destination like uh, the South Pacific and Tahiti or the Dalmatian coast up and down along Croatia and Italy, or uh, through the Panama Canal even, where, again, the perspective is a really helpful one. Your vessels provide that up close and personal experience that only a small ship can. And so um, I invite you, if you've never thought of going on a smaller vessel for the right destination to consider this, it will expand your horizons. Uh, and I love the picture you just showed about taking you up close. We, we had some amazing hiking opportunities in Tahiti uh, that really brought the destination to life in a way that a, a bigger vessel could not do. So back to you. Yeah, and, and the list goes on and on. It's, it's getting, you know, getting off the ship is challenging with the large, some of the larger ships. While, you know, Windstar, we have Zodiacs and we have a, a swim platform on the back and it's very easy. We don't have to stand in line or, or get, uh, uh, or have stickers to, to, get, to get off the ship or, or, or wait your number to get back on the ship as well. Um, it really is your own private yacht and it's as, it's as, uh, it, 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 there's nothing like it in, in, at all. So um, this is kind of our, our, our trophy shot. You have it, uh, Travel and Leisure's World's Best Awards for Small Ship Cruising, uh, first in class. So it, it, it is certainly a well, a well uh, awarded cruise line that, that, we're that we're, I'm representing. As I mentioned before, the, uh, this, the, uh, small, the largest ship we have is 342 guests. The smallest is 148. And this is at full capacity, which we often don't sail. At, we almost never sail at full capacity. So this is just fully maxed out. Our, our guest to staff ratio is for every um, 1.5 guests, there's one staff member. So almost one to one, which is top in the in, in class, a five star experience. So this is a, some of our guests enjoying the, 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 the outside of, of the vessel. And it just, again, it's, it's your own sailing vessel. And, and Renee, I, I love this shot. I think you took this one. You were on board the, uh, the Star Breeze. And I, uh, take it away. I, I love this one. Absolutely, I did. So we had the chance to sail for seven nights in uh, the South Pacific, in and out of Papiete, uh, or Papet in French. Um, and this is the second to last night. The staff, uh, for the first time since the pandemic broke out, uh, over uh, almost two years ago, one should say, uh, they were able to all gather on stage, take their masks off and wave us and uh, show us their faces as we have been showing them our faces because uh, the Windstar protocols, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, are very robust. So they make you extremely safe and healthy while you're sailing. And uh, this was a chance for all of us outdoors to uh, actually see each other as humans again. And, and I do also want to say that pool uh, that you guys retrofitted uh, with the glass mm -hmm. front is one of my favorite places to hang out. And I was deeply concerned. Um, you only see my uh, upper body on this uh, 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 webinar today um, uh, in the water. I was very concerned that, you know, I, parts of my uh, less attractive physique would show in the swimming pool. But the great thing is it's two layers of glass. And the way the light hits these two layers of glass distorts people's bodies. It actually made it very funny uh, when you look through the glass into the water. So uh, I can assure you, you can comfortably and safely go swimming there, enjoy that and not have to worry about people looking at you sideways. Um, just one of those uh, small things that we learned. That's certainly <laughs> a great take. Love, love it, Renee. And this, this shot also shows you the newly renovated pool. We have yep. uh, the, the Star Breeze is, has two sisters as well. Um, the, the legend and the pride. And they are sister ships, all three of them. They are 312 guests fully at full capacity. And they've been completely renew, renewed, rejuvenated, remodeled uh, from, from bow to stern. And one of the things we did do is, is redo the pool, as well as add some suites, additional suites, mm -hmm. and uh, two uh, specialty dining restaurants as well. But uh, this is the, the totally redone uh, deck area on board the Star Breeze of which her two sisters have the same look and feel. So, it was uh, a perfect space to hang out, I have to say. Great, great, great. And you know, one thing about Windstar 2 being small and intimate, the on the ship experience as well as the off the ship experience does reign through uh, both, both uh, so when you onboard the ship and off the ship and uh, the casualness as well. So this is a five-star luxury uh, cruise experience, 
But in a casual environment, there is no jackets required. Um, ladies, you don't have to bring your, your gowns. Um, um, you can if you want to. It's not we're not going to you know, throw you overboard, but you can you can certainly dress as as comfortably as as you'd like. Um, officeship experience as well is just as intimate. And then you know you get up and close and personal with the staff. This is a, a member of the nautical staff on board, um, showing that one of our guests or a couple of our guests just how to, to navigate. So it it is a really really cool experience to be able to do this. Certainly, the big ships don't offer any of these experience and experiences, and it, it is something that, that that's unique to Windstar. Um, we do have the open bridge policy, the water sports platform, which I'll chat about in a moment, uh, 24 hour room service, and cooking demonstrations. Very culinary focus, focused on Windstar. In fact, um, there are um, on board the cruise that, that Renee was on. I think Renee didn't they uh, butcher a, a, an opa? I think it was. We big... we had a a beautiful freshly caught uh, wild fish uh, uh, South Pacific opa, opa. that was uh, demonstrated uh, proper properly uh, trimmed and then served as dinner one night. That was one element we had. We learned how to make our very own French Polynesian vanilla creme brulee from the executive pastry chef, which. Uh, uh, if you know anything about the South Pacific, about 5% of the globe's production of vanilla comes from Tahiti, and it is the most fragrant and flavorful vanilla you can buy. Um, we had the chance to practice and play with it. I learned so much, and, and, and I love cooking, so this was great. And then the local performance, to me, is one of those things. When you're cruising in the South Pacific, for example, uh, you want to learn how local dance and music and singing comes about because it's a very distinct style of entertainment uh, and folklore. And we had the chance to have one of our uh, naturalist's wife on board who is Tahitian by birth, and she gave us dance lessons. Now, I will say this, I have European Germanic hips. They do not move like Tahitians, but it was nevertheless a very educational way to get a sense of how does this even go? And she was so kind and we all had a great time. So uh, it's that bringing the local experiences on board that again, the big ship uh, provides other type of entertainment, musicals and Broadway shows, et cetera. It's a very different setting and uh, it, there's nothing right or wrong about either of them. But when you're in a destination like uh, Tahiti, you want that local experience for sure. Certainly. And we just have, don't have the space for it. I mean, yeah, we, we, you know, we cater to, to guests that, that want to get, you know, go above and beyond and really to, to, to immerse themselves in the destination. Mm -hmm. And we'd, we'd rather, you know, make space for, for better cuisine and, and better service than have the dancing girl, the ventriloquist and the, you know, the, the magician on deck one. So it is, exactly. it is nice to have the, you know, the, 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 the local entertainment on board. And, and Renee mentioned about the vanilla when I, when I was in Tahiti, in fact, we got to see how vanilla was grown and how, how, the it's very very expensive and it's a very uh, it's a it's a time a time laden process to to dry the vanilla out to grow the vanilla yep. the temperature things like that it's 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 very very interesting and you don't get to do that on big ships so it's 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 really something nice so I mentioned the the, the open bridge again something that you would never be able to do on a big ship it just it just didn't wouldn't wouldn't happen and uh, this is something that that every one of our bridges is open. Um, it's not open all the time. You have to be invited. Obviously, you can't go there on your own and, and things like that. At certain certain times, you, you can go up to the bridge and just have a chat with the captain or the engineer and just learn all about uh, how, how things work. And, and it, it's just a really an amazing experience and be able to do this on a small ship is wonderful. Too. Absolutely. I, I can oh, tell you, Roger, on our seven day sailing, the only two times the bridge was not open was on departure the first hour out of uh, the port of Papieta when we left, because it's a rather heavily trafficked uh, port in terms of ferries over to Morea. Uh, and so the captain had the bridge closed. And then the only other time it was closed was when we entered uh, a Motu area through the narrow passage of a coral reef uh, to get to the island of Bora Bora. The rest of the time, the bridge was pretty much open. If you wanted to, in the middle of the night, um, uh, walk up, upstairs and, and chat with the captain and he would tell you where we're navigating. And uh, it just brings cruising even closer to you. It's um, a way to engage with, with a group of staff that traditionally, again, for safety and security reasons, aren't accessible on the larger vessels. So. I can imagine sneaking up in the middle of the night and the captain's up there smoking a pipe. But it probably doesn't happen. <laughs> Nobody was smoking on board. <laughs> Nobody was smoking. But anyway, that's what I think of when I go on the bridge. So uh, the water sports platform, platform, and this is this is available on all of our ships. Um, the sailing, 
uh, yachts as well as the the the, uh, the motor yachts as well uh, too. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is where we have uh, non-motorized and motorized water sports available and complementary. You can see on the right side, Tara, you see these kind of uh, uh, pink and uh, yellow, uh, uh, I don't know, strips. And these are our, we call them lily pads, or there's plenty of names for them, but we kind of launch these out uh, from the ship and they're tied up and you can go and just relax and jump off and flop in the water and maybe pull yourself in and, and get a drink and then pull yourself back out and just relax on them. It's, it's really a, a fun thing to do for a lot of our guests. We also have Zodiacs that will launch from there. You see them on the right side also. Um, paddle boards, stand-up paddle boards, as well as kayak kayaks. And these are all complimentary and available for you to use. So it is a, it's yeah. something that you just can't do, again, on, on other cruise ships. So I absolutely love hanging out on that beautiful floating pad. Uh, chatting with other guests about their experiences. There was a couple of a mother and daughter uh, accommodations on board. And one of the daughters uh, was, well, the mother was in a water ski team in Florida in her earlier years. And the daughter wanted her mother to do it one more time uh, for old time's sake. And the, the uh, Zodiac uh, pulled the, the, the lady on water skis. She was still a pro. It was just lovely to watch. And we all had a wonderful time. And we did that right in the Cook's Inlet in Morea. It was perfectly safe. The water was in the 80s. Uh, the air temperature in the low 90s. I mean, it couldn't have been any better to uh, to play around uh, and, and experience all of those things. So big plus. Yep. Water skiing, banana boats. Um, I'm not sure we do wake surfing, but we do water skiing and banana boats beyond the Zodiacs too. So, And then, um, of course, complimentary room service. And, and it's this is this room service is not just... Uh, uh, continental breakfast and maybe a sandwich at night. Uh, it, it, we do a, an, a, an impressive job with the room service. Um, Renee, tell me about your experience in the room service. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, traditionally when you're on a cruise ship and you look at the room service menu, it is uh, a club sandwich, it is a pizza, it is hamburgers. Uh, that is not the case on Windstar. The, the third night of the program after a long day of excursions, um, we did go see how vanilla grows and had a chance to hike and taste some local pineapples and, and, and bananas and uh, see how um, uh, the beautiful Tahitian black pearls are, are cultured and formed. And then by the time we got back to the ship with plenty of sun, uh, you are close to the equator in the South Pacific. Um, we uh, decided that, you know, it's just too much to go out. So we stayed in the room, watched uh, a movie and ordered room service. And it was the main menu from the main dining room. And you could have dessert from uh, uh, the Star Grill on the top deck. And it was served within 25, 30 minutes uh, after ordering. It came just as beautifully presented as downstairs in the main dining room. And uh, this table set up is exactly what they did, white, white linens. Um, it was absolutely comfortable. And our stateroom was uh, plenty spacious to accommodate that. It even had a fold-up table to store all of the trays. Um, it was absolutely the best room service experience I've ever had on any vessel. Right. The Star Breeze is all sweet. So we, they do have plenty of space to have a meal in, in, in the suite. So it's something that our guests certainly enjoy. And, you know, talk about culinary as well. Is it having a small ship experience? We, we have the ability to, to go out with our culinary staff and pro find out how we, they procure uh, different types of food uh, for the ship itself. So it is part of some of the excursions that we do offer. Um, is, and again, this is something that really doesn't happen on, on the larger ship. So it is a wonderful opportunity for our guests to, again, come off the ship and really get up close and personal um, with the destination and the different types of culinary options. Um, and, and Tahiti is known for obviously seafood, um, they grow a lot of the, lo the local veg or lo load of vegetables there as well. So it is a it is a destination that is this very uh, great with for food and cuisine. Pineapples, I mean? pineapples, coconuts, uh, bananas, uh, of course, all the vanilla, uh, seafood, uh, any imaginable kind. And it's not just that they have seafood; they uh, are really very concerned about conservation of the oceans and making sure that it is. Uh, clean and sustainably uh, uh, grown or harvested. And uh, there is hardly any pollution. I was absolutely amazed how clean and pristine things are. And kudos to Windstar. Uh, on one of our excursions, we passed a, a, a amount of sort of floating plastic in the water. We pulled over, we cleaned it up, and everybody contributed in fishing it out. So it was our way of uh, leaving the place uh, cleaner than we found it and, and uh, make, make an impact uh, on, on, on the experience. Excellent. So 
Um, let's kind of dip a little bit away from Tahiti and talk about some of the other places that we do visit. Um, as I mentioned before, we were firstly known for more warm water climates, but we are going to some of the cooler water climates, which would be, you know, Iceland and, and Alaska, um, where we probably, where the, the destinations that we do, the, the, what we're most known for, as I said before, would be Tahiti, um, the Caribbean, and also the, the Mediterranean, of course. And uh, we are with, with Australia opening up, I think a couple weeks ago, or you know, last week, it's opened up very recently. We are visiting to Australia and another destination that is on the, on the, 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 book, the books for us as well is Asia. And that would be uh, Japan, uh, as well as the Philippines and Indonesia. So and, we, we definitely have a lot of different destinations. Yep. Uh, and, and again, because of the ship size, you get to these smaller ports and experiences that larger vessels can't do. So for example, you have an itinerary that starts in Australia and ends in uh, New Zealand. It's the perfect combination of those intimate port experiences and down under the, the South Pacific, beyond uh, a couple of hours actually flight beyond uh, uh, Papiete uh, into New Zealand, et cetera, is, is uh, finally opening up uh, to uh, vaccinated travelers again, February 21st. So uh, another week away, but almost there. And uh, there's a lot of pent up demand. And of course they have opposite seasons. So the ideal sailing time begins in September and runs through spring of 2023. So it's the perfect time to start planning with uh, uh, what we're gonna show you in a little bit. Um, and, and put that destination back on your bucket list. Absolutely. And, and the way to kind of understand where um, Windstar operates is during the winter months, we're typically in the, the warmer climates. And then as, as we get into the summer months, we branch out a bit. So in the, in the winter months, we're in the, in the Caribbean for the most part, um, South Pacific year round, but also Central America, um, and some of the, some of the the west coast of the United States, but and then once it starts to the world starts to warm up per se, then we're able to experience the Icelands, the the Alaskas, and and then, then some of the Nordic destinations as well. So that's kind of if you get an idea about how how we uh, how we make our destin our, our our itineraries. So I I love this picture. It really encompasses what it's like to be on a small ship. This is a what we call a wet landing, and it's not required, but something that Many of our guests um, to get to these uh, intimate destinations, these intimate ports, these great little stops, you can only get there on a Zodiac. And there's our staff right there greeting you with a, a nice cold drink as you as you get off the ship. So Renee, you can, have you, did you do this? We, we absolutely did on the island of Moorea. We had a landing in order to join our fantastic dolphin experience. And uh, I was completely blown away landing like we did and having a staff member there serving us beautiful pina coladas in, in, in recyclable paper cups that we could all uh, safely uh, 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 recycle after the trip. And those fresh little chunks of pineapple, were absolutely fantastic, freshly grown on the island. Um, doesn't get any better than that. You sure it wasn't a Mai Tai? It was not a Mai Tai because we had to uh, <laughs> operate on other vessels uh, and be safe, but uh, we trust we had uh, uh, enough consumption where we wanted to when we were back on board. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> and this is a great video. You want to narrate this video, Renee? Absolutely. So uh, this is courtesy of our fabulous airline partner, Air Tahiti Nui, who operates a fleet of four uh, 787 Dreamliners to and from Los Angeles uh, to Papiete and into uh, Australia and New Zealand as well. Uh, we were on a helicopter uh, flying literally over our beautiful Starbreeze vessel on the uh, absolutely picturesque island of Bora Bora, uh, one of the gems of the Society Islands, uh, which was one of our overnight stops. And that's another one of the things we're gonna talk about in a moment. Uh, you're not just in at eight in the morning and out at seven o'clock in the afternoon or five o'clock in the afternoon. You are actually there uh, for uh, almost 48 hours, uh, giving you the opportunity to enjoy this port. It is so beautiful. And this aerial view, if you have a chance to go and do that helicopter flight, I highly recommend it. Some of the most beautiful blues I have ever seen in my life uh, from the air. And of course, the vessel right below you. Yeah, this is something that, again, courtesy of Air Tahiti Nui, which is our, our partner there, um, operates uh, several several flights uh, from Los Angeles to, to Papiete. And uh, again, it's one of those once in a lifetime experience. So I have, I've got to do this in, in Maui, uh, Renee, but, uh, but I, it's certainly on my bucket list to, to do this in, in Tahiti or, or Morea, there, yeah. rather. So, 
And uh, Renee, I love this picture too, because this is something that uh, uh, the overwater water bungalows there you see, and, and, and talk about this, this shot, Renee. Absolutely. So uh, one of the things that we hear from our guests loud and clear is that uh, they have their dream list, their bucket list of things they want to do. And spending a night in a beautiful overwater bungalow uh, is on top of many people's lists. And, and the great thing about Windstar, because you're in port overnight, is that you can actually combine the two. And Windstar will offer you the opportunity to spend your night in an overwater bungalow with transfers from the ship and back to uh, the ship after your stay. And uh, it does not, you're not missing a beat uh, with your experience. You're just uh, on the overwater bungalow overnight instead of on the vessel. Uh, and a lot of guests actually took, uh, took that opportunity to enjoy uh, one of the resorts. There are multiple resorts on Bora Bora. Uh, you partner with Intercontinental and with the Conrad. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. They're both spectacular in their own way. Um, this is uh, just one of those uh, bucket list items you can do while you're on the island. And I definitely recommend if that's something you've always wanted to do, that one night uh, is the perfect night to do it. Yeah, and one thing to make note of about Windstar, we're, we're a full service uh, travel operator. Um, yeah, certainly we, we own and operate cruise ships, but we also will provide you with um, airline uh, transfer uh, transfers from the from the airport to the ship if you'd like to purchase those from us too. Um, as well as pre and post hotel, hotel stays mm -hmm. and insurance. So you can buy all, all that complete package from Windstar. And this is not just at Tahiti, it's all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, all of our destinations do include a seamless experience um, from, from the, your, your home airport uh, to the destination and then back to your home airport. And um, any of your, either your, your travel advisors from, from uh, uh, direct travel could, could uh, take care of that for you. Oh, of course. So uh, another itinerary that is one of my favorites and one that we uh, operate um, most of the year is our round trip St. Martin. This is uh, an area of the world in, in the Caribbean. And we go to those smaller ports. So it's, it's not the bigger ones that we, we hit. We want to hit those smaller, lesser known ports like St. Bart's, like Antigua or Anguilla, sorry, uh, Virgin Gorda, Jos van Dijk, Tortola. Um, Norman Island. I, I'd never heard of Norman Island before. I did do a little bit of research myself, but these are the types of spots that, that Windstar will visit. It's not the big ships that we built. We will do some shopping. You like to shop. We will do, we go to St. Thomas, which you can do some shopping, but um, we really like to go to those small intimate ports uh, to, to really see the destination. And again, the Caribbean is one of our, our most popular destinations that we do go to. So um, Renee, take this one. You see that? Well, this is uh, this is uh, that's a taxi, right? That that is our taxi, actually. That is a beautiful 1972 Land Rover uh, converted to uh, an excursion platform. There are six guests uh, uh, seating capacity on top, and we did an island tour uh, off the beautiful island of Taha, which is where 90% of the vanilla that is grown in. Uh, the Tahitian Islands uh, comes from. So we got to see uh, an organic vanilla plantation. We did a lovely tour with locals. We learned how to uh, harvest coconuts, not just when and how to harvest them, but also what you can make of them, uh, the shells as well as the meat, and of course the fa fabulous coconut water that's inside. Um, it was a very hands-on, locals-operated tour uh, with a husband and wife team who have been living on the island for over 40 years. Again, it brought the destination to life like uh, rarely ever an excursion does on some of the other operators uh, that are out there. And then down below, you see me with the mask on, just about uh, getting ready to get onto the tender uh, to get back over to uh, the beautiful Star Breeze uh, in one of, our, one of our ports uh, where we did an excursion. So uh, it is that very up close and personal. Um, just so you know, our guests, uh, 180 guests on board out of 312 possible. So uh, again, what Roger said earlier, it's not always completely full. Uh, you got to know every, everybody on the ship, but uh, also had that privacy and space that you wanted uh, if you wanted to relax and chill. And here, you know, this mentioned that too about the, the amount of people on board the ship. Now is really the time to book. I mean, every destination that we visit has very yeah. few, you know, right now is the time because not, not many people are traveling right now. And, and now is the time to take advantage of, of great, great pricing and destinations that are, are, are not, well, you know, there's not a lot of people there. So yeah. If you're if you're willing to you know to to get out there now is the time to do it again great price and this it's all over the world as well and I yeah. remember when when I was in Tahiti I remember just the the different types of 
excursions that were offered as well. You can you can take an ATV uh, on one of the, I think that was Moray that I did the ATV. Yep. Um, you can also, an all-terrain vehicle if you rather. Also, we also offer um, jet ski excursions as well. Of course, scuba diving and snorkeling. Uh, one thing about Windstar as well that, that I wanna make mention of is that you don't have to bring your own snorkeling gear. We provide the snorkeling gear for you on Windstar. Yeah, so exactly. um, it's certainly something that's this night. I think Again, there's actually the a video coming of some underwater footage I took on my iPhone uh, if we if we move forward on the next slide. There you step. go. So we were cruising along on one of our excursions. We did the um, Coral Garden Drift Snorkeling, and this is a beautiful leopard ray. I filmed this with my own iPhone underwater. It's an iPhone 13. It's waterproof. Uh, this is not professional in any way. Uh, certainly people can do far better. But the point is you're in destination. You can literally stick your phone underwater. Only do it if it's waterproof, um, and you can take your own pictures. It makes my, my heart smile to see that beautiful um, leopard ray swim by and man that thing was moving fast um, and there's beautiful. an excursion too if you if you're not too squeamish you can actually swim with the sharks as well so absolutely I, I took one. a pass on that one I, I felt that um, that was a little more than I wanted to handle but uh, certainly several guests did and Tahiti is one of the if you are do you have if you are a scuba diver um, or have you do are you a scuba diver? Uh, Tahiti is one of the, the the best scuba diving spots in the world as well. So if if you want to do more than just snorkeling, uh, we do offer scuba diving also two one and two yep. tank dives for those divers out there. Um, Renee, this is this is a, a amazing experience. So got to yeah, this was one of the highlights on the second to last night. Uh, we did a private uh, Tahitian beach party. Uh, on a Mo2, it was just the guests from Windstar. You see lots of video cameras and the beautiful dancers uh, that came and entertained us. But it wasn't just entertainment in a show sense. It was education as well. What does the dance represent? Why are we dancing the way we do? The, th the history of all the flower lays and how that came about. Uh, it was absolutely magical and not to mention the spectacular barbecue food that the staff pulled up. Um, we didn't even see them set it up. I don't know how they, where they whipped it out, but uh, it was absolutely lovely and it brought the destination to life. And I want to say all the way down to the detail of having box spray available for those guests like me who are susceptible to being bitten because of course I left mine in my cabin um, uh, on the ship. Uh, but so every detail was thought of and uh, we brought everything back that we put on the island. Uh, in fact, we left the island, clean it and we found it, uh, which is one of those things that Windstar is very aware of the whole ecological impact that we have uh, when we travel. So hats off. And when, when you do the private uh, visit to the private Motu during the day, I, I'd seen some images and I didn't put it on this presentation, but we actually have the, what do they call them? Uh, sunbeds, right? That do have a, mm -hmm. a cover yeah. on them too. So they you have, have, you, have your, your, you have your sun chairs and you also have your beautiful hammocks that you can just hang between two uh, palm trees and enjoy the beauty of the of the setting and this is just beautiful crystal white sand so in the in the spirit of time let's uh, move on i'm more than happy to answer questions as we get on uh but uh, absolutely beautiful and uh, talk about we were talking about food earlier about the barbecue and, and one thing about uh, about windstar we are the the official cruise line of the james beard foundation so if you are a foodie you like to watch top chef i love to watch top chef i follow top i follow uh, Michelin star chefs, um, you will get that delicious cuisine on board Windstar, uh, locally sourced um, Michelin inspired menus. It, it is a, a great experience and alfresco style dinings, you know, again, these warm water, uh, warm weather uh, climates that we do visit alfresco style dining is, is certainly, I'm sure Renee that you were able to, to do that a few times and we did. That. And, and the picture you see on the top is actually the breakfast area in the morning and the lunch buffet in the midday. And then at night, it becomes a place called Candles, uh, an upgrade outside restaurant, uh, mainly focused on steak and seafood. We ate there several nights in a row. And the, the beauty of this is it's not an upgrade charge. You don't have to make reservations weeks in advance to go and eat there once and pay extra. It is available to all guests at all times. When the ship is fuller, re reservations are recommended, but they are easily available the day off or, or uh, depending on anniversaries in certain settings the night before if you want to make a reservation. But it's really great. And the Star Grill was one of my favorite hangouts. Yeah, right. The Star Grill, that's, that, that turns into a, um, uh, again, a barbecue style restaurant where we have, the, everyone yeah. talks about the pastrami. That's what- oh, It I was delicious. He's talking about the pastrami. 
So, uh, oops, we'll let me get back here. We've got this little video, and I'll, I'll pop this video in. Renee, you can let that play. Uh, Marie? Yeah, Roger, if you want to hang on one second. Oh, that's right. We're supposed to stop there. This is a go back here real quick. <laughs> we're going to take a poll. I had that we down are, in my notes. Go we are going to engage our guests, and we've got a question for them. So we're just going to put a poll up on the screen and get you to give us your answers. So if you want to choose, what is the name of Windstar Cruises culinary partner? We've got Food and Wine, the James Beard Foundation, Culinary Institute of America, or the National Restaurant Association. So we're going to give you a couple of minutes, there are a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds to vote. And then we'll bring up the answers and Roger's going to tell us what the right answer is. Well, I can tell the right answer too because I am just okay. like Walter is a a foodie fan, and uh, uh, several of the the menus that were chosen or the the exactly ninety two percent of go. our participants got it right. The James Beard Foundation. It's really great, not just that they serve uh, these restaurant uh, these these mm -hmm. menus inspired by aspiring chefs, but in some cases they even share the recipe with you to take home uh, on a little card, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, that's how we learned about this uh, one uh, chef's uh, special vanilla uh, creme brulee. So anyway, uh, awesome in, uh, to see that so many guests are paying attention. It's beautiful. Excellent. Well, I, I know the next one coming up, I jumped ahead a little bit, but um, my boss, uh, Steve Samea, was actually on the cruise with Renee Schneeberger, and they put together a, a quick little video, and I'm going to go ahead and pop that to the next next slide sure. coming up here. It's sure. been a pleasure to be on board for a few days. In it, this it has been, hasn't absolute it? Absolute <laughs> paradise, it has. So uh, for context, for those of you joining us, we had the chance to sail on Windstar's Star Breeze in the South Pacific in the French Polynesian Islands, and we're just, just about to wrap up <laughs> the cruise, exactly. I wanted to ask you a few questions. So uh, if you permit me, uh, tell me a little bit about what makes Windstar so unique as a cruising experience from so many other operators in the space. Well, you know, I, a, a lot of things, Renee. I, I hinted a little bit about our crew being excited to be back, but I think our crew are our secret weapon. Um, there's something about the small ship environment and the way they interact with our guests and the, the connection and bonds that seem to happen between our, our staff and, and the guests. And then amongst the guests themselves, really. Um, there's a definite friendliness among uh, everyone. Everyone gets to know each other and becomes like a family on board. Uh, that's the, the first thing. And then the second thing, I think, really, is the elegant casualness um, yeah. about the experience. I mean, um, the way we're dressed is um, how you, you can dress for, for dinner. There's no need for suits or ball gowns or formality. Um, you know, it's just, real, there's no pretense. Uh, it, you're definitely in a luxury experience, but uh, you can let your hair down and have ex extra some fun. What makes some of the uh, experiences with these small ships unique, especially in regards to Windstar's sailboats as well as uh, the luxury yacht that we're on? Yeah, and so we, we do have those two classes of ships. We've got the uh, Star class, which is the all suite ships that we're on, but we also have the um, uh, Wind class. Mm -hmm. uh, both offer that same sort of experience, um, but the, the key connection really um, between them is the size. Um, we really believe at Windstar that uh, 350 guests or less is a real sweet spot. You know, it's that anticipatory type service that we can deliver. I mean, everyone knows your name, not just your waiter or your cabin steward, but literally almost every crew member and probably the captain actually knows your name. And it's not only the ship, Renee, but it's also, as you've seen, it's the destinations that we go to. Yeah. You know, these are unspoiled destinations, uncrowded, um, and not just this week, on really any itinerary we offer. And it, it helps make that experience very authentic. Yeah, I, the number one reason why someone will choose a Windstar Cruise for the first time is our itinerary and the destinations. Uh, it's probably because we spend late nights in port, we overnight in port, uh, really get you up close and personal. And of course, there would be no, no purpose of getting you to those great destinations if we didn't provide a way to enjoy it. And I, I think exactly our Shores Cruising Department, uh, we've got some really great people um, that personally vet the tours. It's something I think is a little bit different about Windstar is our staff in our corporate office uh, don't just work with third parties and, and read descriptions and things. They actually come out, meet the tour guides. Uh, before we have a new destination, they always come out and, and actually take the tours themselves first before we sell them. Uh, and it's, again, sort of that personal approach that we do everything with from our service, but it also applies to our source versions. And mm -hmm. um, our corporate people in Seattle actually know these tour guides here by name, which is, I, I think, very unique. Absolutely. Great. 
great. This shows you a little video. And uh, one thing you did mention, the, the reason why people go on our, our ships is because of the destinations and the ports. The reason they come back is because of the staff. Yeah. So it's a, it really is the, the, the quality of staff and is just immeasurable. So let, let's talk a little bit about the ships. Uh, the, the Wind Class Plus is our three, our three sister ships, uh, the Star Breeze, the Legend, and the Pride. Um, the minimum square foot of a stateroom on board, or a suite rather, is 277 square feet. So that's the minimum size. That's the entry level size. Um, you see there on the, on, the, on the bottom middle, in the middle, you see one of the suites. And some of our suites, we, we kind of took a poll. Some of our suites actually have the bed next to the window. Some, some folks want to have the bed away from the window with the, the, uh, the sitting area. So it's, 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 it's one of those 50 or half, do or half dozen or six or whatever it is. Of, it's, some people the like good, either way, but we do offer both the, choices. The good news is the deck plan tells you and uh, you can work with your travel advisor to pick what works for you. I love the bed by the window so you can uh, lie down and look out and see the fabulous destination go by. Some people prefer to have their a sitting room by the window as they spend more time sitting there. So you have a choice, which is great. Um, awesome. This, this, is a, this is one of our beautiful balcony suites. This one has the, the nice little veranda. Um, again, you can see that the bed is uh, not next to the window or is next to the window rather. And then uh, the, the other choice there too. So again, a very comfortable sitting area where we, again, we can enough space to serve to serve a meal. Yeah. So then we have, as, as Steve mentioned before, is our wind class ships. These ships range in capacity from 148 guests up to, up to 342 guests, which is our wind surf is our flagship. Again, these votes consistent is the, the guest to staff ratio is consistent. 1.5 to one. So again, that very intimate uh, guest to staff ratio, which, which Windstar is known for, and just the quality of, of that. Uh, this is the Windsurf, our, our, again, our flagship, beautiful shot there of the Windsurf, uh, the staterooms in the Windsurf, very well appointed. And uh, can I, can you know, I tell you, Roger, when I, when I first heard Windstar as a, as a sail ship, I imagined a hammock in the basement <laughs> of a, uh, you know, medieval vessel crossing the Atlantic. And peeling uh, potatoes, right? My image, mm -hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean, essentially. And this is a far cry from it. You have a full bed. You have all the amenities that you would expect, power outlets, shower, bathroom, all of that. So uh, it really is that home away from home. But you happen to be on a sailboat, which is awesome. Climate control, of course. And certainly, you know, a, a TV, or a monitor to watch videos and TV. And this is, again, a, a beautiful shot of the, the, the aft deck area, the pool deck, where the wind, the wind surf does have the pool, which is wonderful as well. In the beautiful Croatian town of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik, there you go, beautiful. So, and I think you see one of the water ships behind there too. So, and then our smaller ships, our little guys, which are 148 passengers, again, even more intimate, than, than the other ships we operate. But again, the same level of service, um, the pool and all the same features on port. And then this is a shot of the uh, one of the state rooms, again, very well appointed, comfortable, enough, enough space to have a, a private dinner as well. And uh, just, again, the, the use of space is just extraordinary. So we're, we're dealing with, a, again, a, a ship that is only 148 passengers, um, but the, just the, the, the way we use the space is extraordinary. So. Uh, the question that's always coming up, I'm sure it's going to be in the chat feature if we had one, uh, is about uh, safety protocols on board Windstar. And we are constantly monitoring this. And I can positively say that in the last couple of weeks, is everything has just been better news each and every day, it, it feels like. And it, it's, it's a, it, it is a dance we're doing. And what, what I have noticed as well is that we are notifying and we are in communication with our uh, guests before they sail several times to keep them updated with the most up-to-date information. And most I, of the I can, protocols, I, go ahead. I can just simply say, Roger, I have never felt safer than I did on that Windstar experience. Uh, we did daily temperature checks. We had tests to get on the ship. There were three required tests before we could board the vessel in Tahiti specifically. Uh, everyone wore masks in public spaces. Of course, hand washing, all the sanitation is everywhere. And uh, it was really felt like a family working together to make the best of it. Um, I cannot hide, rate this uh, uh, higher than I do. And I think everyone should feel comfortable traveling these days uh, under these protocols. Uh, and again, it is that intimate experience, so you can really uh, make sure that you take care of yourself and take care of your fellow travelers. Yeah, thanks so much. And what we have done on Windstar, the question is, well, what's included, Roger? Are there extra charges for things? 
We've done it. We've made it really quite simple. We have some of our guests that would like a, a, a cruise experience with wonderful cuisine and accommodation. Um, but then we have some guests that would like to have more and be a more inclusive experience. So we offer what we call an all in program. This would be um, unlimited Wi Fi, unlimited drinks, unlimited cocktails, wine, beer, and all gratuity. So this is, would be our all in package. But we have, we can actually split that up in the cabin. It, Renee, it's quite unique, isn't it? That if you have one guest that doesn't want to go all in, that one does, it's something unusual. Exactly. Most cruise lines require you to buy it for both guests in the same stateroom or suite. Windstar allows you to choose it literally by the guest level. And you also, and I should point this out here, have some amazing solo traveler rates. Now, it's not pay for one person, but it's up 20% surcharge mm -hmm. only, which is really in line with what most hotels charge uh, for solo occupancy when you think of, of the rate that you're paying. So again, Windstar, uh, the way you can make friends and connections, because it is that smaller intimate space, gives you the choice to tailor the trip exactly to what you want. Absolutely. Thanks so much. And talk about offers. This is what our exclusive offer is. It's a to start from the top there, it's a, it's a bonus commission of $50 per person onboard credit. And what we're also doing, uh, if, if you book before February 28th, so there, there's a little bit of a time um, uh, issue with here. So book, book, you know, the next couple of weeks. Oh, you have two we're weeks. Doing, uh, that, two that's weeks, a, yeah. Perfect time to make a decision and go. Make a decision, right. It's, it's up to $1,000 shipboard credit per stateroom or up to two complimentary nights uh either pre or post before the cruise. So that's our maximum. It's dependent upon the length of the cruise. So if you have a longer cruise, you're gonna get more onboard credit, but if you're a shorter cruise would get less onboard credit and also as well as the, or make the choice of a one night or a two night stay. Um, but the $50 bonus commission is, is uh, sorry, bonus uh, onboard credit, excuse me, is a perpetual uh, offer. So I'll be offering that for anybody who attended the, the show tonight um, is, is that's available to you. So I think we're pretty much wrapped up. What I wanted, to, and I put this in my slide, but but the direct vision people took it out. We do have brochures. So we <laughs> have actual physical brochures. So certainly a lot of things are digital right now. Some people like to touch and feel things, but contact your direct or vision travel advisor um, after the presentation. Um, they will send you, get a brochure sent to you, and um, they will help you to, to purchase your next Windstar cruise. Uh, thank Absolutely. you so much for for attending. Hey, I, I want to yeah. say we, we, we did not take it out because we, we wanted mm -hmm. to be mean spirited, quite the contrary. We felt <laughs> that uh, with a line that is so focused on the environment and the protection of our resources that we sail in, uh, that uh, 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 advertising print brochures may not be the smartest way. However, we recognize that many of you on the call today uh, love to have a brochure and our advisors will get one in your hands, no question. Well and typically our brochures are two to three years. So they look good on a coffee table for a couple of years. So that's another reason to, <laughs> to, to, to get one of our brochures. And plus they're easier to share with your friends and, and neighbors if they want to come, you know, if, they, if you want them to join you, let's say. Well, Roger and Renee, I have a couple of questions that have come forward. Um, so the first question that I have is, I'm a solo traveler. Well, I feel welcome on board. Absolutely. I can tell you uh, we had 180 guests on board. There were several solo travelers and there were a couple of nights where even uh, my table was five and we had a sp space open and we invited a single lady to join us. Uh, you become family, but if you want to be by yourself, you can do that too. So again, it's that intimacy that uh, Windstar staff uh, brings to the table to make you feel comfortable and even help you connect. Uh, oh, did you know this lady loves this? And mm -hmm. you may like that too and get you in touch with each other. A, a big ship has a harder time doing that when you talk thousands of guests. This really allows you that intimate experience. And absolutely, uh, solo travelers have no problem at all. In fact, we see more and more solo travelers these days uh, uh, enjoying the world because they're ready to go and maybe their spouses aren't or uh, whatever the circumstances are. So it's a great way to do that for sure. I, I certainly agree with you, Renee. I, my, my previous uh, company that I worked for a small river cruise company, we had smaller ships too, to the tune of about 100 passengers. And I would get the same question. And, and it's almost perception versus reality. If you're a solo traveler, you think, wow, if I'm on a big ship, I'll have all these people to meet and they'll all be, it's the exact opposite. Is it they immediately, if it's a small ship, Everybody kind of gets to know each other after the first couple of days. And as Ray, Renee mentioned too, you're welcomed very quickly and you're, you're invited to dinner. 
Um, it's, it's casual. That's another thing as well. So oftentimes, you know, dressing up and if you're a solo person, it's a, it might be a little, feel a little funny. It's very casual. So you don't have to, you know, dress up. And again, you can feel comfortable. So I think it's a great option for, for, for solo travelers. Great. Now, thank you very much. That is, uh, I do have another question. Is, uh, are gratuities included? So go ahead. Do you want to answer that? Yeah, so when you choose the all-in package, uh, which comes with the beverage package, with the Wi-Fi, then your gratuities are included. Otherwise, if you are uh, a guest that wants to choose their own uh, way of combining things, then your gratuities are uh, on a daily basis added to your shipboard account. And that's similar to what other cruise lines do. Uh, you can then choose your uh, $50 onboard credit to help offset some of those gratuities to the staff. Um, uh, it's your choice, uh, whichever way you want to go. Yeah, it's your, it's your choice. And that's what we decided to do. And we found that most or some people um, want the all in quote unquote, all inclusive experience. So they can choose our all in program and some don't. So it's, it's up to you. Absolutely. I would also like to comment on the shore excursions themselves. Not only are they extremely uh, local focused uh, operators, as, as uh, Steve said in the video, they, they, test the crew, the tours, they, they have their staff involved in it and they make sure that they suit uh, the needs of Windstar clients, but they're also extremely competitive from a pricing perspective. Uh, these are really uh, abilities and experiences that you can have at a very reasonable rate compared to what some other cruise lines charge for what I would consider sometimes more cookie cutter experiences. Uh, we certainly sell everything and we have a lot of guests who do their own private excursions as well. Uh, that's another option, of course, that is open, but I was really impressed with the uh, choice, the selection, and the way these tours were operated. Uh, definitely uh, highly encourage folks to look at that. Okay, I have a great question here. And I was wondering if anyone was gonna ask this. Tell us about the sales themselves. What percentage of the time are they being used during one cruise? Well, I, I can say the cruise that I was on, it was actually a contest. They, they had the, the captain had put it out there and whoever could predict the closest amount of time that we were actually at full sale um, won a prize. And I, I can't recall what the prize was, but it was actually quite fun. And it, you know, it, it, de it definitely depends on the destination. So we do like to go at full sale. What the, the nice part going at full sale is the engines are off and the engines are, it's, so it's dead silence. So it starts with, as you mentioned, Marlene, we start with the music. And it just builds that, yeah. you know, when we are going to go at full sail, we, when we depart the port, we start the music. But then if we go at full sail, you, we start some music again, and it just builds that, that uh, excitement. And then everybody knows we're at full sail. It's silence. It's, it's really a magical experience. So the answer to your question is it really depends on the sailing. Okay, Roger, when I was on the cruise, they would put the sails up, but we would sail under engine power. So do they, do you know if they still do that? They do both. Yeah. There, there's some point where the sale, the sale, right. We do both. So the yeah. good question, good point, Marlene. There's oftentimes where the sales are up, but we still are at engine power, but there certainly are times where the sales are up and we're at pure sail power. So, or pure uh, wind power. Yeah. yeah. And I should just add as a, as a navigational uh, a geek uh, that, that enjoys uh, cruise ships and airplanes and so forth, there are several ports, especially in the Mediterranean, that have restrictions in order to assure safe passage. So you must keep the engine on to be able to navigate the vessel properly. So even if you wanted to sail, you're not legally allowed to. Uh, but where the sail ships can be used and the sails can be used, you certainly will use them. Now, I was on the Starbreeze, the ship to the left on this image. There was no sailing. Uh, but I want to comment that that vessel had been completely refurbished with two brand new engines that are significantly cleaner than any other cruise ship vessels in the market. And uh, that is, again, a testament to Windstar's uh, not just making the ship more luxurious and a little bit bigger for guests, but also do the right thing for the environment. So uh, kudos to, to Windstar for that investment. Yeah, I think there's something magical. Like both ships are absolutely beautiful and give you a an incredible experience. But uh, having sailed on the Windstar, there is something magical about being on board up on the upper deck with them when those sails go up. But yeah. I do have a couple more questions. Um, one of them is, should you book your shore excursions in advance? 
So that will depend on the destination. Uh, in the South Pacific on our sailing in, in uh, the Society Islands, every excursion had more than enough space for everyone. The exception was the helicopter flight, um, where of course you only have uh, four seats on, on a helicopter. And so there was a limited number uh, available, but uh, generally you don't have to worry. Now in some destinations, where uh, the inventory may be a little bit more limited. And this is where a travel advisor, uh, any one of our vision and direct travel advisors will guide you uh, through the process uh, to make sure that you are reserved for the spot that you actually want to take. Um, uh, Croatia comes to mind, some of the Dalmatian coast ports where uh, excursions may have more limited space uh, than you want to book it in advance. Mm -hmm. And we have just enough time for one more question. And Renee, this one's for you. Okay. So, did you see any sharks while you were snorkeling? <laughs> yes, we did see sharks, but uh, the, the sharks that were near us on that drift garden uh, snorkel tour were bullhead sharks. They are about three and a half, four feet long, so they are not interested in humans. Uh, I uh, did not do the, the actual swimming with the sharks option that was offered uh, on Bora Bora. Uh, several guests did, and they encountered some significant size uh, sharks that were uh, bigger than the humans floating in the water. That was a bit more than I was able to handle personally. I am more of an air person, um, but it is one of those bucket list things. Uh, these are all very, um, uh, how shall I say, gentle sharks. Uh, we're not talking right. uh, shark diving in South Africa where you have the great whites and the cages. Uh, these are reef sharks uh, and, and they're quite fascinating to watch um, for sure. Well, I hope that uh, everyone that's joined us this, this evening, that we've inspired you to experience Windstar Cruises. Please take advantage of our offer. Um, the call your vision or direct travel uh, advisor. And a special thank you to Roger and Windstar Cruises for joining us this evening. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you to Renee. Thank you, Roger. And that, thank you. And, and Marlene. And that. Thank you, thank you to all of our guests. And that. And I hope that as we have that you can experience Windstar Cruises. It's magical. Absolutely. Have a good, have a good night, everyone. Take care. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.